serve the Lord. May it be said in generation to come in Jesus' name. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, the one that made the heaven and the earth, the self-existing God, the one that said, come unto me, all ye who labor, and a heavy lady, I will give you rest. But I will bless you, Lord, because your word is true. Your word says, There remain therefore rest to the poor of God. But I will bless you because for your people. Thank you for the rest you are giving to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Holy Father, if there is anyone who has sinned against you in our thoughts, in our action, in our behavior, by what you have done, by what we say or fail to do or fail to say, have mercy and forgive us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, as we look into your word, we invite the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, the one that has been left on earth by Jesus, to teach us the word of God, to make us to retain this word, to practicalize it, and to bless him to follow us. And our children and all our brothers and sisters will listen to this word later on, by way of social media, those who are listening right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, this is your land. Amen. Bless us, Lord God of Israel. Yes. And let your blessing rest upon us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of God, every week, we take the Bible, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, line by line. For us to understand the praises and the might of God. The greatest danger that can befall any man or woman is not to know the might of God. You know, I told us a very funny story. 1983, we were undergraduate students in Oklahoma. And this uh, young Nigerian boys, or young African uh, boys, they will take their vehicle, they will run the red light. 
and the police will arrest them. When they are arrested by the police, they will tell the policeman, oh, we are from Africa. In Africa, <laughs> red means go. <laughs> and green means stop. Well, the, the, the judge will say, do you understand your driving license when you took the license? Oh, I forgot my, your job, the judge. That American was a very good country. Well, they will say, well, you are not in America because you don't know the law does not mean you have to break the law. So you're supposed to know the law. So this is the first warning. If I find you this my court, I know you're a foreign student, I will send you to back to your country. So the man will say, okay, yes sir, yes sir. You find that not knowing the mind of God can lead people to sin. But when you go to heaven, you cannot say, God, I didn't know that was sin. God, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Number one, our goal is to prepare a family that will hear God's voice and do God's will. And then the blessing of God will be upon them and they will become a blessing to others. That's our goal. Wherever you are, you're supposed to be a blessing by receiving the word of God. And once you receive the word of God, the blessing of God will rest upon your household. And that blessing, you're supposed to transfer it to others also. And you're supposed to do the will of God. God can tell you, go and give somebody a cup of water, a bottle of water. I say, God, no, I can't do that. You know that guy, he looks rich. That guy doesn't need my, 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 my water. But if you obey God, God will also talk to somebody else to send you whatever you need. May God help us in Jesus' name. So our prayer is that we should hear the voice of God, we should do the will of God, so that God's blessing can rest upon us in Jesus' name. We are living in a very dangerous time today because a lot of people don't hear the word of God. Because most of the churches, whether small or big, they are preaching about how to become rich, how to be a millionaire, how to have a lot of money, how to do that. That is not the will of God. When you study the Bible and you understand the particularity, you say, it is God that gives you the power to make wealth. God will give you power to make wealth. And you find that you don't have to begin to pursue wealth. Wealth begin to pursue you. God will give you a creative idea. If you're a student, God will make you to pass your exams. Whatever you do, God begins to favor you. Men will begin to favor you. Women begin to favor you. Begin to tell yourself, wow, I am lucky. You are not. It is a blessing of God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Now we're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 34 from verses 1 to 33. He said, Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's side, following the example of his ancestor David, he did not turn away from doing what was right. During the eight years of his reign, while he was still young, Josiah began to seek the Lord, the God of his ancestor David. Then in the twelfth year, he began to purify Judah and Jerusalem, destroying all pagan shrines, the astral pole, the calf idols, the cast images. He ordered that the altar of Baal be destroyed, and that the recent altar which stood above them be broken down. He also made sure that the astral poles, the calf idols, and the smart and the carved idols and the, the carved images were smashed and shattered over the grave of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bone of the priest on their altar and so he purified Judah and Jerusalem. May God bless the word in Jesus' name. Today, you see this young man. Can you imagine? 
You are eight years old. Or you have a son or a daughter who is eight years old. What do you think? He said, well, this person is too young to know God. This person is not big enough to know God. He's not wise enough to know God. He's not smart enough to know God. Brothers and sisters, let us challenge ourselves. I always say, if you want to serve God, it's a personal decision. Age is no barrier. Education is no barrier. Weight is no barrier. Location is no barrier. Here is a young man, very, very young, Josiah. This young man started serving the Lord at a very, very young age. And he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. Guess what? The Lord blessed him tremendously. At a very young age, he determined. So, and then you find that, that this young man, at a very young age, he became a king. All people who were older than him, they turned to idol. They didn't want to serve God. But this young man, I was challenged. Of course, it was prophesied that this man was going to be a great man before he was born. There was prophecy. Brothers and sisters, what prophecy is upon your life today? Yesterday, my little boy was reading the Bible, he asked me a question, he was in the book of John. He said, that they may hear, but they will not understand. That they may see, but they will not see, or they will not perceive. He said, but why did he, why would God say that? I said, God did not actually want people not to see, but it is the human heart. The human heart can be very deceiving. If you don't take time, you find yourself doing things that are not in the will of God. As children of God, we have to determine, no matter the condition, that I am going to serve God, I am going to love God, I am going to bless God. If you do that, you are setting a godly legacy for your children. A big legacy. And God will bless them because the Bible says the righteous, their children will rule this earth. Their children will rule the earth. So you said at eight years old, he became king. You would think this guy don't know what to do. At a very young age, he knew his authority, the power that was in his hand. You know, today God give you power, either as a worker, as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as an employee, you have tremendous power. Brothers and sisters, how do you use that power? You know, the, the, the sad part that people use the power to sin, to do bad things. Oh, I have the money. I can, I can buy whatever I want to buy. I can eat whatever I want to eat. I can go to the place I want to go. That is very, very dangerous. Josiah became king at your age and he did what was pleasing. A young boy, I can't believe it. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. David died many years ago. David is still a positive reference on the earth. That's why I said, what will be said of us when we're not here tomorrow? You know what people hear that now? God forbid. God forbid. I say, what is God forbidding? You mean you don't want to go home? This world, this world is not our home. We are only pregnant, we are only stranger on this earth. So that's why everything we do, we have to do it with the fear of God. This man did what was right, like David. He did not turn away from doing what was right. He did not turn away. He did not turn away. You know, it's very easy to start well, but some people don't end well. Some people have been a Christian 
in this country, along the way, you know what they do? They will stop going to church. They stop reading their Bible. They stop praying. They stop talking about God. And before they realize it, they begin to go into sin. And their life is messed up. Their children's life is messed up. Their generation is messed up. Everything about them is messed up. And they blame God. They turn around and say, well, you know I'm having this problem? You know, <laughs> let me be tell you the sad part. Some of the pastors today will tell you, it is, a, it is your mother that died 100 years ago that's bothering you. I say, excuse me? What does your mother have to do with your mess of life? It is the choice you make on the tender consequences. On the tender consequences. The choice you make is what affects us. You may not know what you are doing is going to affect you. You can begin to do things that are not right. But you may not know that they are not right. Before you realize it, they will lure you into a road of no return and a road of destruction. That's what the Bible says. There's a road that seems right unto man. There's a way that, that seems right. He leads to the end. Whether it's his business, whether it's his friendship, whether it's even doing anything. You have to make sure you hear the voice of God, you do the will of God. Otherwise, you may find yourself in a serious trouble. This man, young man, during his eight years, during eight, eight years of his reign, the first eight years of his reign, he was, he was still young, just 16 years, began to see the God of his ancestor David. Then, in the 12th year, he began to purify Judah and Jerusalem. That's where he established righteousness. That's why we get our topic. He began to establish righteousness in the land. Destroy all pagan shrines. Everything that has to do with idol. He said, no. Does this one belong to God? No. Yeah, break it. Does this one belong to God? No. Break it. He was a young man. He has that authority as a king. You know you have authority to remove all the party from your life. You have authority to remove drug, alcohol, sex, pornography, inordinate affection from your life. To remove greediness, to remove lasciviousness, to remove envy, to remove hatred, to remove idol, either worshipping yourself or worshipping other things. So the Lord is calling every one of us today. He said, destroy all the pagan shrines in your life. The astral pole could be your car, could be your job, could be your education, and not make you to serve the Lord. They carve idols. They cast images. He ordered, the, he ordered that the, the altars of Baal be demolished and that the incest altar which stood above them be broken down. He also made sure that astral poles, they carve idols, and the cast images were smashed and scattered over the grave of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bone of the pagan priest in their own altars. So he purified Judah and Jerusalem. He established righteousness. Look at your house. What are those you have? Are they pleasing God? Are they pleasing God? May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, chapter 34 from verse 6. He did Starting from verse 6, he did the same thing in the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, even as far as Naphtali, and in the regions all around them. He destroyed the pagan altars and the Asherah poles, and he crushed the idols into dust. He cut down all the incense altars throughout the land of Israel. Finally, he returned to Jerusalem. In the 18th year of his reign, after he had purified the land and the temple, Josiah appointed Shaphan, son of Azalea, Messiah, the governor of Jerusalem, and Joah, son of Durahaz, the royal historian, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. They gave Hekiah 
the high priest, the money that had been collected by the Levites who served as gatekeeper at the temple of God. The gifts were brought by people from Manasseh, Ephraim, and from all the remnants of Israel, all well as from as well as from all Judea, Benjamin, and the people of Jerusalem. He entrusted the money to the men assigned to supervise the restoration of the lost temple. Then they paid the workers who did the repairs and renovations of the temple. They hired carpenters and builders who purchased finished stone for the walls and timber for the rafters and beams. They restored what earlier kings of Judah had allowed to fall into ruins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the lesson here today is that this young man did a remarkable thing. Very, very interesting thing. The first thing he did, he said, you know what happened? We had to purify the land. That is called repentance. You cannot work for God if your hands are dirty. I say it all the time. God does not use dirty things. If you want God to use you, self-purification is very, very important. Self-purification, call it sanctification. You sanctify yourself. Means set yourself aside for God's work. You cannot put your hand into dirty things and expect God to use you. You know, people want to serve the Lord. They want God to use them, but their hands are not clean. Even there are some people in the church today, they are not really pastors. They pretend to be pastors, but they are not. They are far away from God. For that reason, the Lord is not happy with them. If you truly want God to use you, I want God to bless you, you must purify yourself. Here is a, a modern uh, story. There's a lady called Katrikuma. This lady was not uh, highly educated. At a very young age, she was not rebellious. But she devoted herself one day to take the Bible, the New Testament, and read it throughout the whole night and finish it. Just like a novel. She started all over again. She read it and read and read. While she was at home, God started talking to her. And God started showing her things. And she went to the church. He saw this man say, You just got drunk today. I saw you with a lady. Both of you just had a relationship before you come to the church. <laughs> he said, this, this lady is crazy. What you're saying is true. The person ran out of the church. The Lord is used that tremendously. First of all, you have to purify yourself. If you want God to use you, you cannot be a vessel for God's use if your hands are dirty. Whatever you are doing, you must do it with all of your heart, with pure impurity and sincerity of heart. God will never use you. You want God to use you? God is looking for a vessel to use every day. As I told us, every now and then, and every day, we need more men and women in the ministry. The pastors are overlabeled and we are few. We need a lot of men and women of God in the ministry. I'm not telling you to quit your job. You can still do your job and still serve the Lord. You can still do your work and still be a pastor. Your secular job. That's actually your second job. Your first job is to be an evangelist for Jesus. To be Jesus' disciples. Jesus' representative. Wherever you go, when, you, when people come to your work, you tell to them about Jesus. There's always a way to tell them, Oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, the weather. Oh, we thank God that we have a wonderful weather. Or oh, we thank God it could have been worse. You know, God has been so nice to us and He allows us to pass through what is going on right now. Well, all, all that God is telling more, more from us so just to thank Him, to be appreciative, and to give our life to Him. The person says, What do you give your life to God? Say, Well, meaning we turn from our sin and be nice to each other. That's what I call the choir folks. 
You are preaching the word of God. Without knowing you are preaching. So, this man went ahead and purified the temple, purified the city, purified the people, and repaired the temple of God. You know, ability for us to repair our own body is very, very important. You know, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's where God dwells. God does not dwell in the temple made by man. If your temple is clean, God will begin to use you. The next thing the king did, he went to the temple of God and looked at the things that were destroyed. All the previous kings that were serving the idol, they were not very faithful in keeping the house of God clean. What did he do? He turned around and said, we have to repair it. That's why we say, if you go to a church, which I encourage us to do as much as possible, because of this uh, uh, COVID. COVID right now, it's not possible, and a lot of churches are not open, or if they are open, there are very few. Support your church as much as you can. Look at it as your father's house. And whatever you can do, expect God will bless you. Encourage your pastor. The pastors are going through tremendous something. I talk to pastors every day, especially those in Africa. They are going through a head. But they, I encourage them, don't, don't get discouraged. Our labor is not in vain. This world is not our home. So this young man did a wonderful job. He got men who are faithful, who are willing to do the work and buy the best of the best material to do God's work. Verse 12. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The workers served faithfully under the leadership of Jena, Jehad and Obedia, Levites of the Mararat clan and Zachariah and Meshulam, Levites of the Kohahite clan, other Levites, all of whom were skilled musicians, were put in charge of the laborers of the various trades. Still, others assisted as secretaries, officials, and gatekeepers. While they were bringing out the money collected at the Lord's temple, Hekaya the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that was written by Moses. Hekaya said to Shepherd, the court secretary, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hekaya gave the scroll to Shepherd. Shepherd took the scroll to the king and reported, Your officials are doing everything they were assigned to do. The money that was collected at the temple of the Lord has been turned over to the supervisors and workmen. Shepherd also told the king, Hekaya the priest has given me a scroll. So Shepherd read it to the king. When the king heard what was written in the law, he tore his clothes in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hekaya, Ahikam, son of Shepherd. Abbot, son of Mekai, Shephan, the court secretary, and Asaiah, the king's personal advisor, go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me, and for all the remnant of Israel and Judah. Inquire about the words written in the scroll that has been found, for the Lord great anger has been poured out on us because our ancestors have not obeyed the word of the Lord. We have not been doing everything this scroll says we must do. So Hekaya and the other men went to the new quarters of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huda. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tekvah, son of Hazaz, the keeper of the temple's wardrobe. She said to them, the Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the causes written in the scroll that was read to the king of Judah will come true. For my people have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to pagan gods. 
and I am very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will be poured out on this place, and it will not be quenched. But go to the king of Judah, who sent you to seek the Lord, and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the message you have just heard. You were sorry and humble yourself before God when you heard these words against this city and its people. You humble yourself and tore your clothing in despair and wept before me in repentance. And I have indeed heard you, says the Lord. So I will not send the promised disaster until after you have died and be buried in peace. You yourself will not see the disasters I'm going to bring to on this city and its people. So they took her message back to the king. The word of the Lord. That be to God. Brothers and sisters, that's called repentance. When you read the word of God, does it speak to your heart? Or you just say, oh, that's okay. You know, there are people who are looking for a place, who are looking for a sin in the Bible. Jesus turned water to wine. I have to drink. <laughs> David had a care with a woman. I had to have a care with a woman too. But they're not looking at the consequences that followed David's action. Jesus' wine was not alcoholic. Alcohol is very, very dangerous. It can damage your liver. It can damage your kidney. It can damage your eyes. And it can damage your brain. And it can lead, it can lead to liver cirrhosis. Meaning your liver, will be, your liver will be fried, like you fry it. You can see liver cirrhosis, I watch it on, on YouTube. It's like, it's burnt because the alcohol have destroyed it. So people don't know the consequence of action. So whatever we do, repentance is very, very important. When you hear the word of God, do you feel sorry? Say, oh, God, I'm sorry for my sin. That's called repentance. This man tore his clothes, he was a young king. He tore his clothes, he said, oh no. This is not good. We have been disobeying God. We have been sinning. Oh God, we are sorry. I'm sorry for my sin. God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. He was actually crying. And he said, go to the house of God. Please go and inquire about God. What do we have to do? That's your pastor. That's the word of God to the Bible. If you can read, go to the Bible. Talk to somebody. You can call me and say, Pastor, I have this concern. This is what happened. What can I do? Turn your heart to God. Don't go to the pastor who will tell you, oh, don't worry, we are all sinners. If you sin, just continue, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the money, try to support the church with your money. No, God doesn't need your money. Remember that man, the Simon, the sorcerer, who said who told Peter, I want to give you this money so you can give me this gift. He said, the gift of God is not for sale. Go and perish with your money. We don't buy the gift of God. So brothers and sisters, Repentance is very, very important. God is angry with the world today. And I say, especially with this America, because there are so much blood shed. You know, we live in Texas. Our governor is a very, very funny guy. Very, very funny, to say the least. There are a lot of homeless people in this country, in this state, doesn't care about them. There are people who are who, are, who, are, who don't have home, young kids who are going from orphan home to orphan home or from, from a foster home to foster home. Nobody is, nobody is talking about them. But this guy is only talking about building the war, about arresting people. And I'm saying, no wearing masks. There are so many things to solve. Our schools are failing. This state doesn't have health insurance. And they say they are Christian. But why not you use that money and say, okay, we are going to put this money towards the head insurance so that people can have head insurance and go to the hospital and be able to treat themselves for free. No. He wants to do things that are anti-Christ, anti-God. And they say they are Christian. Be careful what you sow. Your seed more surely grow. He who sow good seed to
share it with sorrow tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, don't think nobody will see you. You may hide it from me. Oh yes, you may hide it from everybody. Oh yes, but you cannot hide it from God. You may hide it from me. Oh yes, you may hide it from everybody. God said, I have seen what you have done, with what you have done. I'm very angry. But you went before me in repentance. That's called a contrary heart, a heart of repentance. You went before me. You tore your clothes. I have seen your heart broken. I have seen that you, you are sorry for your sin. But I'm not going to bring the punishment that I have intended. Say, does God repent of, uh, of his sin? No. God does not have sin, but God can only change his mind. He intended consequences that God wanted to do, God said, I will not do it. It doesn't mean it's still not going to happen, but it's going to be postponed to the next generation. That's why I have to be very careful. That's why I have to teach our children the word of God, so that they will not reap the sin, the consequences of iniquity that may be lingering. That may be lingering. When you have the fear of God, from generation to generation, you have the blessing of God. You have the favor of God. You have the love of God. Wherever you go to, fear God. In your place of work, do the right thing. Read your Bible, pray, daily confess your sin. If you go and say, God, I'm sorry for my sin, I'm back home. If I've sinned against you, forgive me. Just like Job. But you know what happened? This man cleansed everything. He said, because they worship pagan idol. My people have abandoned me. And I offer sacrifice to pagan gods. And I'm very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will pour out on this place. And it will not be quenched. Oh my God. That is God talking. We have to be very careful. We don't allow God's wrath to fall upon us. God's wrath is very, very serious. That's why brothers and sisters, we daily want to understand the mind of God. This world is not our home. There are people, their goal is, I want to get rich. If I'm rich today, I die tomorrow, I don't care. I just want to have money. I say, excuse me? You know what they call Christmas turkey? Or chicken that lays the egg without her children? That's how a man who has money without no God. But when you know God, you fear God, you do God's will, and you are involved with the work of charity, like Colinus and Dockers. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless your children. The Lord will bless your generation, even up to a thousand generation. If you pray every day, you are praying for others and say, God, you see this country? There is so much violence. There is so much killing. There is so much shooting. There is so much abortion. Father, have mercy. That's just your prayer. God, have mercy. Forgive the sin of this nation. Forgive us our sin. Nigeria has so much terrorism, so much Boko Haram, killing innocent people. You're only just to pray for the Father, have mercy. Nobody may know you, but God, you are known in heaven. Have mercy. Cause the men to change their heart. In Ghana, there's so much evil, so much bad thing. They are trying to turn to gay. The government say, no, we are, not, we are men. We are, we are man supposed to marry a woman. A man supposed to marry a woman. A woman supposed to marry a man. Some of these few people say, oh, we want to be like the America. But God is not happy. You only to say, God, touch the heart of men. Let them know you. Let them fear you. Let them love you. Give them a heart of repentance. You are a teacher. You see, they are trying to teach young kids the bad thing at school. Say, Father, I pray that these children will hear the voice of God. They will know God. That's your prayer. God will reward you. God will reward your children. You will never go rewarded. You don't have to have money to serve God. We have three things that God requires for us. Time, your talent, and your treasure. 
Your time is just to pray. Unless you're talent to pray for people. You may have treasure. But when you do that, you truly sincerely pray. You are building a godly legacy. And God will never forget that generation that serve him. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we are living in a very dangerous time today. Bad things are going all over the whole world. When I look at, when I listen to the news, when I hear what's going on, it's like sins is multiplying. We are living the last day. If, you know, during the past day, it was the last day. Now we are living in the last seconds. We are living in the last seconds. But one thing I want to warn us, brothers and sisters, is that we must make sure we serve the Lord well, so that we do not fall into sin. Josiah served the Lord well. He did the right thing. God said, Josiah, you heard my words. You confessed your sin. You repented your words. You tore your clothes. For that reason, I will not bring this cause, destruction of this land, during your time. You are going to die in peace. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm. Brothers and sisters, you know, when somebody dies in peace, it's very lovely. It's very lovely. May God help us in Jesus' name. Verse 29. Then the king summoned all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the people of Judah and Jerusalem, along with the priests and the Levites, all the people from the greatest to the least. There the king read to them, read to them the entire book of the covenant that had been found in the lost temple. The king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commands, laws, and decrees with all his heart and soul. He promised to obey all the terms of the covenant that were written in the school, and he required everyone in Jerusalem and the people of Benjamin to make a similar pledge. The people of Jerusalem did so, renewing their covenant with God, the God of their ancestors. So Josiah removed all detestable idols from the entire land of Israel and required everyone to worship the Lord their God. And throughout the rest of his lifetime, they did not turn away from the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the word of the Lord. Thank you to God. I love that. That's why we say, that's why we say, King Josiah institutes righteousness and bring righteousness to Judah and Jerusalem and cause everybody to know God. May God give us the grace to do that today in Jesus' name. Father, give us a heart to love you, a heart to obey you, a heart to pledge in our individual home. We say, God, we are going to serve you. We are going to obey you. We are going to fear you. We are going to do your will at home in our workplace, in the streets, wherever we are. Father, give us the spirit to do that in Jesus' name. I was very impressed when I read that. Josiah, a young man, pledged that it is God I'm going to serve. May we do the same thing to the Lord in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters, we're going to pray. Say, God, help us to turn from our sin. Help us to obey you. Help us to love you. Help us to fear you. Help us to do your will in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. We need you, Lord, we need you. Every hour we need you. Help us, Lord, our Savior. We
Elizabeth will pray for us that our hearts will truly be in God. We will make a pledge, our children will make a pledge to serve the Lord. After that one, we're going to ask Dr. Fina to pray and Sister, Sister Deborah. Mommy Elizabeth, go ahead and pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful for another opportunity you have given us today to come before your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your word you have spoken to us. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of understanding you have given us. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your goodness and mercy, for being so compassionate to us, for being considerate to us, for being empathetic to us, for forgiving us, for being so generous to us with your word. For being so kind to us, for being sympathetic to us, Father and Lord, we are grateful today. Thank you, Lord, for your son you have used tonight, today, and I will pray that you strengthen him more and more. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I hear we are your people. In, in you we live, in whom we move, in yes. you we have our being. Yes. We want to thank you, Lord God Almighty. Every day of our life, so God, we put it in your hands. That you give us an understanding of who you are. That you open our spiritual eyes, that you open our spiritual ears to hear from you, O oh God. And in humility, we have come to you today to have your way. Take away whatever is not of God, every pride, every spirit of arrogance that does not make us humble ourselves to do your will. Father, take them away from us today, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness towards each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. Father, it is not taking granted. For the work he did on the cross of Calvary. Father, to be as prostitution, he took our place to God. With no sin, but Lord, you carried our sin and you died on the cross. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord, this morning. We are grateful, Lord. If we have mass all over our bodies, it's not enough to thank you. For the innumerable things you have done, and you have to keep doing in our lives. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We have heard your word. Help us to stay true to your word. Yes, Lord. Just like you do, Father, O oh God, brought down all the idols, the every idol in our life. Yes, Lord. Whether it's in our job, whether it's at the clothes we put on, the uh, the building we put on, Father, help us to let go of them. Yes, in Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord God, we take away pride from us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That we will uh, that we will truly serve you, we will truly represent you. On earth, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. For our children, oh God, we trust in our children that we shall be a living example to our children yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our children will not see you, that they will not copy their peers, oh God. Yes, but Lord. Lord, we will be an example wherever they go yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, we bless your holy name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Dr. Fina, go ahead and pray. Remember, the Bishop. Uh, Remember, you know, Bishop, in his, uh, in his work, that God will be with him and strengthen him. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our merciful God, the God who sent His Holy Son to come and die for us, that we may have salvation, that we may have freedom for the Lord. We are calling upon you today and we are calling upon that Lord. Oh, Heavenly King of Kings, we want to commit everybody in this group unto you, yes, especially our Father Bishop. Father Lord, we want to commit every single soul, Father Lord, that has taken this group unto you. Yes, and we are choosing our daddy Bishop as a point of contact, Father Lord, yes, that you continue to be family to provide for him. Yes, that you continue to be him at his point of need. Yes, that as he flows to Father Lord, that he will flourish in that Father Lord. Yes. That as he will come to every journey, Father Lord, that you will make way for him, Father Lord. Yes. Father Lord, that you will let his voice, Father Lord, be a voice, Father Lord, that will bring salvation, yes, that will bring healing, yes, that will bring, Father Lord, and whatever it is, go for Father Lord among his flock, Father Lord. Yes, oh, our Heavenly Father. Oh, our King of Kings, Father yes, Lord. Lord. We commit ourselves unto you, Father Lord, mm -hmm. as children and Father, Father Lord. Oh, Father Lord, we know what is happening in the world. We hear different diversions of what is in fashion. We hear different diversions of what is supposed to be cool and okay now, Father Lord. Father Lord, we hear things that are more than new ones, but Father Lord, but we go right, Father Lord, in some place, Father Lord. So, Father Lord, we beg you, we seek you for that wisdom. To be able to raise our family and our children, Father Lord, in the wisdom and morals of the Lord. 
state no we pray for this country he left we pray for this state we pray for this country that peace will reign in our time every spirit of racism anti-christ spirit will rebuke it in jesus name we bring Juma before you that you worthy today lord that you cover her with the blood of jesus christ and every other person that is looking for a husband or wife we are make way for them lord in jesus name father our day shall be long and we shall fulfill our days Peace shall reign our time, in our generation, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you for everything. We are grateful, Lord. Make us your vessel of honor to use and reuse and reuse and the end, keep for your glory and honor, in Jesus' name. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find favor with God and with man, and those who are coming in contact with, in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we love you. God bless you. We meet you next week. Same time, same place. Invite, invite your friends to join us. Yes. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah.